NNPP Labour Party plan a merger for Peter Obi and Kwankwaso presidential ticket. And we take a closer look at Kingsley Mogalu's political future ahead of 2023's elections. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakop. We begin tonight with the Ekiti state elections, which took place during the weekend, with the All Progressive Congress uh, APC candidate Biodun Uyebanji emerging, the winner. Now, the APC scored about 187,057 votes to defeat its closest rival, the SDP, which garnered 82,211 votes. The PDP, which got 67,457 votes, uh, and uh, 13 other parties also participated uh, in that election. Now, the SDP gubernatorial candidate, um, former Governor Shegwoni, has rejected the outcome uh, of the election and has asked political parties who contested to join hands with him to develop the state. Uh, well, let's head to our uh, first conversation for tonight. Now, the NNPP has disclosed that there is an ongoing discussion with the Labour Party on a merger, yes, uh, in 2023 for the elections. While Peter Obi of the Labour Party is yet to publicly speak on that merger, Kwanko So said the Labour Party and the new Nigeria's People's Party will have an advantage in the next election if an agreement can be reached. Already, the NNPP has a growing membership base in the North. Prominent members of the movement who have registered with the NNPP include a former Minister of Youth and Sports, Solomon Dalong, the president and President Buhari's estranged right-hand man, Buba Galadima. Now, former Governor Obi, who recently defected from the PDP and joined the Labour Party, has appealed to a large youth following in the southern part of Nigeria. Joining us to break this down and, of course, uh, discuss this is uh, engineer Musa Idris. He's a political affairs analyst and also joining us later on in the conversation is Dikbo Olayoku. He is a journalist. Thank you so much, Mr. Idris, for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, let's start by looking at, you know, some of the um, conversation around this merger. Um, some people have said that this merger is uh, some sort of mirage. It might not necessarily be um, reached. And uh, others seem to be tight-lipped as if they know something that we do not know. But share your thoughts with us as to what you think of it. Yeah, quite interesting. I, I probably would have said that uh, it's a mirage, really. You see, I... I have thought that the caliber of uh, Kwankwaso and uh, Peter Obi, in their own rights, they are very good politicians. Uh, they are well known within their various domain, and uh, unfortunately for them, they they are coming at the right at the wrong time. Uh, Peter Obi know that from day one, he may probably not pair up with uh, Atiku Abubakar, who just picked the ticket of a PDP, and uh, Kwankwaso himself. Like we all know, we know when he pulled out of uh, the arrangement with the uh, PDP and then uh, APC, and now he's in uh, NNPP. I am not saying that uh, major is not possible, but as it is now, I want to use a word that's already been going on within the media domain. They are a spoiler. They are probably not going to you know, take a straight ticket and then maybe win the kind of uh, election that's been practiced in Nigeria. I don't see Peter Obi getting all the Igbo votes that if it were, and then eventually he takes the ticket with measure with, uh, with Konkoso. Likewise, Konkoso, he can probably not take all the, the votes within the North and then begin to win. So these votes are probably going to be split among all the various contenders as it is now. So it simply means that they may not get a sole win to begin to say, yes, they, they are major diffusion can actually give them the victory. This cannot happen. What it will make, make, probably look like at the end of the day, they will share the, so, the vital northern votes and probably some splitter of evil votes. Some papers are even circulating that uh, Igbo's has over 9 million within the northwest. Uh, we, we, we disputed some of these figures. If that is what they are saying, that all the Igbo's are probably going to give uh, Peter or B their, 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 their votes, that may not give him this election. So this is what we are looking at. 
So yeah. if, 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 for instance, before this primary stuff came up, they had decided to come together and they believe their, their ideologies are the same. As it is now, we don't even know whether they can flock together. Do they really have the same ideology? Why do they want the measure? What are they trying to achieve? What are the political values at various levels? What do they, all, all of this, what are they trying to tell Nigerians they are coming together? You see, these are some of the issues that need to be played out in the political domain before you begin to okay. either ask, I mean, begin to give them an edge in the kind of policies that we have in Nigeria today. So Great. I don't see this measure coming up. Even when this measure do come up, I don't see them picking the victory. Rather, I see them as people are trying to spoil the shows for other bigger part that probably were won the election straight up. Great. Let me. We, we're being joined by uh, Dipo Olayoko, who is of the NNPP, by the way. Um, I think he's the national secretary uh, for the NNPP. Mr. Olayoko, um, as opposed to what Mr. Idris is saying, um, we have heard um, the BBC house did carry the story uh, that um, former Governor Kwankoso was in talks with the Labour Party uh, under Peter Obi. Um, and many are wondering how this merger would work, knowing that several people have, you know, uh, said that um, it might be legally impossible to have that merger, or even if it were to be a merger that would form a political party, it's too late in the day. But you are with the NNPP. What exactly, or where exactly is uh, Mr. Kwanko still going with this idea? Thank you very much. Close to be Nigerians, good evening. Uh, I don't think the his Excellency, Senator Rabbi Musa Kwankwaso ever mentioned the word major. Because um, from the look of things as we have it today, I think we are past the level of major. Because uh, the individual political parties have submitted the names of their uh, presidential candidates to INEC. That one was done between uh, June 10th and June 17th, which was uh, last week Friday. And then because major will mean that uh, either one or the both political parties will lose their identity for a new um, um, individual that will come up as it were, this one political party. Uh, but I, I think uh, the issue of uh, talks involving political parties is not only restricted to NNPP and Labour Party. Politicians across party lines are talking. And uh, I think uh, it cut across the political divides. And um, I, I think the essence now is that uh, Nigeria needs to be rescued. We cannot continue the way we are today. And that is why, if some people feel there is the need for them to talk and see how they can form an alliance. Because, like I said, the issue of major is not there again. It's not there anymore, rather. I think, um, I think that's exactly what the political parties are doing now. And it might interest to know that it's not only the parties in the opposition that are talking to you. Even parties in government, they are also talking. Hmm. Be because, you see, uh, like I, we used to observe, that when you have a, an election ahead of you, it's like a battle, so to speak, not where you exchange the fire, as they always say, but it's like a war. It requires some strategy. Mm. And that's why even let us look at the war, issue of war. Take America as an example. When America wanted to go into the Gulf War, it was it tried to build some alliances. So I, I think that is exactly what is happening now. The parties are not talking about major because we are part of the level of major. The parties have submitted the names of their candidates, presidential and running mate to right neck. And then if you look at what happened in 1998, 1999, when uh, AD and APP wanted to form something like uh, a major, uh, I never told them that it's not possible. One of you has to drop his uh, identity. And that's exactly what happened. The vote came under AD then. So, so could this be, could this, I, I think could this be what that, uh, the NNPP is that. considering, Mr. Uh, um, um, is this what the, could this be what the Labour Party and the NNPP and all the other people you say are in talks? Is this what, the, could this be what they're um, 
maybe angling for and and to what end because you know you can it's one thing to be in talks it's another for the talks to yield something so to what end are these talks being had yes at this level the talk will be in form of alliance because um don't forget that um when you're talking about alliance you're talking about your areas of strength and then your areas of weakness and that's exactly what the parties are looking at and um, you never can tell, like, um, I was able to listen to the complete part of uh, my brother there, that perhaps some parties, parties are always already looking ahead of the 2023 election, that uh, we, might not, we might not get the winner at the first ballot. You know, when you're going to a decision like this, you consider a lot of options, just like when you're going into war. You look at options A, excuse me, you look at options B. So, I, I think parties are looking at uh, what, what happens between before 2023 election, what happened during, and then you know, I can tell what will happen after 2023 election. But in, in, in everywhere uh, where politics has been practiced, you are building new alliances, you are re-engineering, you are realigning, and that is what they call politics. That is why your best enemy today might become your best friend tomorrow, and that is what you're talking about, the politics. What matters most is the interest that you are going to protect. So I, I think that's exactly what people are talking about. We might not be looking at major per se, because major is something that is behind us. We are looking at building alliances that will further the cause of democracy in Nigeria. Uh, my dear, you know, uh, nobody can claim to be happy with what's happening in Nigeria today. And uh, if you are looking at some people say, okay, let us come together to be able to obtain the, hegem the hegemony of that are seem to have get themselves entrenched. I, I don't think uh, that is too much in politics because that is what politics is all about. You are at the line, you will be engineer. The purpose is what, how do you get to a destination? I, I think that is exactly what is happening now. Like I said, it's not only restricted to NMPP and Labour. Other parties are also talking. You know, I can tell they can build an alliance before 2023 election that will make for a more united force to be able to prosecute 2020 election effectively in the interest of Nigeria and the interest of Nigerians. It makes me question, uh, back to you, Mr. Idris, it makes me question, you talked about the fact that some of these people are, in your words, spoilers uh, for the elections and they might cause a lot of split votes, talking especially about Kwankwesto and, um, and uh, Pitaobi. Um, so do you... I mean, a lot of pundits have also, you know, um, out of curiosity uh, and started strategizing and, you know, uh, preempting what the elections would look like. Some have even said that there might be a runoff elections because of some of these um, split votes in different regions in the country. Normally, uh, one would eye the big states for the numbers to at least hit that 25% mark. Um, but with this, what do you see happening in 2023? And, and, and like Mr. Layaku has said, this might just be something that would upstage um, the two major political parties come 2023. But what's your postulation? Yeah, a lot to be discussed here, really. I like the fact that uh, my uncle here said it succinctly when he, he didn't see possibility for any major now. It's rather late in the day. I had said it earlier that uh, what were they doing if they had wanted to fuse together when they allowed the primaries to take place and then they never thought of major and all of that. They are all big weights as it is today. They, they have their various, you know, political uh, 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 caliber that they can, they can deploy at various levels. But you see, I use the word spoiler because like you rightly said, there could be some runoff. That is if they go ahead to contest as they are doing currently, these votes are going to be split. I can tell you that we may have Obo split in Kanu. Igbo will want to vote for Abgari for Obi, which is, of course, in the Labour Party now. While Konkoso, like we know, he had this court like court like followers in Kanu. There is what they call a uh, Goma Goma, is our local palace. Konkoso has a way he, he, he runs his political uh, activities. If there are about uh, all the wards, all the polling units in Kano, Kongo also has at least 10 persons that he maintains within that, uh, that domain, which simply means that he can easily deploy several thousands of his people within that, that locality of, of, of Kano. That simply means that the ANP, the APC votes, the PDP votes, the Labour Party votes, 
and uh, the, the his own vote, NLP vote, these votes are going to be split in Kano. That simply means that all these various uh, uh, presidential candidates are going to split votes among themselves. Mm -hmm. This may likely happen in the Igbo areas where uh, that's the southeast specifically, where uh, it will be is going to hold forth. And then uh, we're also going to have in the Yoruba area as well, of course, the APC is going to host me. And then these votes are going to, in that manner, you know, be shared among these, uh, at least as, as, as it is now, those four political parties, which are the, the, the current weight. But if you look at it politically, the ways we first look at it, I do not see them at the end of the day delivering those key votes that are going to have, because people are, especially our people in the North, they will be looking at those tickets that will actually deliver what, 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 what they are looking for. That is the winning votes. I think APP, APC and the PDP are those parties that are probably going to have a chunk of the votes, and then that is where the winner is, is not going to come from. Mm -hmm. Then you now begin to look at the variables. What are those factors that will give them those key votes that we can decide the, the, the winning ticket? Nigeria is going to play, 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 play so here. And we're going to have ethnicity also play so here. So these are things that are going to come to play. And I must tell you that if you are saying the religion is going to play its role, people will not take uh, 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 P2OB into reckoning in the north because of his past utterances and all of that. And then, uh, you, you, of course, you know what is happening currently in Igbo land with our people in the, in, in the southeast. And of course, the way their people have been living peacefully in the north. So, which simply means that there is no northerner that is going to consider P2OB for one, one vote. So, so, so you're telling me that we're going to have, sorry, I'm so sorry to talk over you, Mr. Idris. So you're telling me that we're going to see a lot of people voting across ethnic lines as opposed to oh, of course, looking of for a politician that would necessarily um, bring the kind of change that we're looking for. Instead, we're just going to vote for whoever looks like us or sounds like us and is most acceptable to us. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You see, because uh, you know, you, uh, people have a voting pattern. You see, most of the bulk of the votes is certainly going to come from the northwest, where most of the votes are going to come from. And then, uh, 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 Konkoso is a contender, a very strong contender. Uh, Kano still has a, 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 a for, for local governments, so I want and that a, a lot of votes coming out from that place. And Konkosia, you can see them the red cap. They don't the red cap. And they move like cut like, you know, going straight for for for, for whoever Konkoso done their, their their tickets. So as it is now, it's going to be Konkoso all the way in Kano, and some splinter uh, votes that are going to come from AMPP and then uh, and then and of course PDP. So it's going to go that way. But most of the the block votes that are going to come to other parties are going to flow from the southwest, which of course you know Chile is very strong there, and then you are going to have the northeast. Which of course, you know, Atiku is going to hold sway there. So the northern, the northwest vote, which of, of course is going to be the deciding votes, is going to split among those three political parties. The incumbency factor, the Buhari factor in the northwest is going to play out. And of course, Atiku, like we all know, is the most highly, the most standing, outstanding political figure in, 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 in Nigeria today. Which of course, you know how he built his bridges. You see how he emerged in the, in the Jock of Lake primaries, where he knocked down. Uh, 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 a wiki, and then of course the way, the way he will traverse the entire breadth of this country, and then he pulled out that ticket. So all this, all this is my worry. That is why I say that the Konkoso and Peter B, they are spoilers. I think they would rather just stay out of this election and allow this country be, because this vote is not going to count as to begin to give them the, the necessary relevance that they're that, that, that are talking of. But mm -hmm. if I have done this, like I said earlier, of course, I, I do told you, I just told you that my uncle here, I said it succinctly, where he was talking of uh, this did not even materialize it. Okay. What we are probably going to have now is some kind of alliances. If my uncle is talking of alliances, what does he mean? Does it mean that uh, Peter B is going to say on the voting day, oh, go and vote for, for NMPP? Or is the Konkos going to say on the voting day, oh, go and vote for uh, 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 a Labour Party? Is that the kind of alliance they are talking? So I don't understand all of this. So these two characters, so these two caliber of political weights that we are talking of, the, 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 the Labour Party, and then the the the, the, the Konkoso, uh, led by the NNPP. NNPP. I don't see them as bringing a deciding vote here. Okay. The deciding vote is going to come from a, from PDP and then uh, and, and, and and APC. But at the end of the day, they are going to be the deciding winning vote. But as they come by, 
we will be able to analyze properly and begin to mention where the victory is going to come from in the district court. All right. Um, Mr. Layeko, I'm sure that you have loads to respond to this because I also have questions. I have loads of questions. Um, because the moment you talked about talks and alliances, I'm wondering who's going to collapse whose structure into whose because that's, all, that's the other thing. Is the Labour Party going to say, okay, well, we're opening our doors, let's collapse the NMPP into the Labour Party, or what's going to happen? And those are the questions that he's posing. He's also made it clear from his position that Nigerians will only be voting in 2023 along ethnic lines. Uh, and for all of the um, voter education and the conversations that people have been having, and go get your voter's card, um, does this, does, this, does it mean that Nigerians are not necessarily um, listening, or is it that maybe we, are, we prefer to continue the way we are, uh, as opposed to getting the kinds of results that we want to get? Because I'm wondering, why should we be voting along ethnic and religious lines? Yeah, yeah, yes, thank you. It's like, uh, let me use the word, the talk about talks uh, seems to be dominating uh, the political discourse. But as a political party, uh, that one is not on the, the front burner for us as we go along, because our major focus now is how do we meet up with the INEC deadline as uh, regarding the submission of uh, the data of our candidates. Like I, like I said earlier, we have been able to scale the hurdle of the, that's the first hurdle, which is national, the president and his attorney mate, as well as members of the National Assembly. I think our major focus now is how do we scale the hurdle of uh, submitting the list of our candidates for the governorship, their deputies, and then the houses of assembly. I think that is the major focus as we have today. By June, by uh, July 15, we're able to put that behind us. Then we'll be looking at the window for substitution and stuff like that. So to us, the issue of talks is not actually the, our main focus now. But let me tell you one thing. You know, the 2023 elections uh, might be different slightly a bit from the election we have been witnessing in the past. I quite agree with my brother there that uh, some sentiments will see play out, like religious sentiment, religious sentiment, sorry, the ethnic sentiment, and some other sentiments remote to assessment. But at the same time, Nigerians will now be asking themselves, how was my life, my living standard, in 2015 when PPC took over, in 1999, when PDP took over, to some extent, these issues are going to play a prominent role. Yes, we might have some little religious sentiment, by ethnic sentiment, but Nigerians are going to ask themselves, and that is where the 2020 election might be slightly different. And that is where I think I differ from my brother who believes that the NNPP and the um, and, um, Labour Party under Peter will be uh, actually going to act the spoiler. No, rather. Uh, the problem is, we, the, 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 the issue of 2023 is between Nigerians and the so-called big parties. It is not between the so-called spoilers, as my brother would say. It is between Nigerians and them. We have had experience, political experience, the, this discussion has given us 24 years of experience, 16 under PDP, 8 under APC. Nigerians are going to interrogate this aspect. Um, is at my life, has it improved? It is not a case of going from fire to fry pan, and that is what is going to be the major determinant as we go into the election. It is not about APC, APC it's not about PDP. It's about what they have been able to run, the hard work they have been able to wreck at Nigerians in the past 24 years. I think that one is going to play a very prominent role. It might not be that pronounced until maybe by the time we get to 2027. But the major, most important aspect of the campaign, because you know campaigns have not started, you don't know what everybody has in this uh, cupboard that will be the campaign tools. But by the time the campaign starts, then we'll begin to ask Nigerians, what do they expect as from 2023? Do they want to continue in this era? Where this would now cost about 800 naira per liter? Would Nigerians want to continue like that? Where the dollar exchange for close to 600 naira? So those are the issues. It's not the matter of a party being the spoiler, a party being the getting the determining uh, um, the victory vote. It is a, it is a, an aspect of Nigerians asking themselves some questions as we go into 2023. Because <coughs> Nigerians themselves, they are no fools. 
And Nigeria will begin to ask the police police that's when they even come out to campaign. We have been seeing instances of what is happening. We are even some members of our social assembly, members of the Senate, cannot even go to their villages. People are turning them back. I, I, so I, I think we shouldn't get to a situation where we provoke Nigerians to go ahead of this. So I, I think it's better we just allow the thing to come seamlessly without any violence, so that Nigerians will not be asking. When you have a member of House of Representatives that has been representing his constituency for years and wanting to go home, but people say you are not going to enter this place, go back. And you think Nigeria 2020 election will be like 2019 or 2015? I think the 2020 election is going to be like a shocker to a lot of people. And okay. for okay, the NNPP, for the NNPP, uh, like I said, our media focus now is not about the talks. The talk is just about our ongoing thing. But our media focus is how do we make sure we scale the hurdle of high neck? Because don't forget that if you don't operate the detail of your candidates to high neck quarter, then you don't have anything to campaign for. So mm -hmm. that is why the most important thing for a political party now is how do we make sure that we even get a candidate recognized by INS in the first instance? Because it's only the high candidate that you are able to upload their data into INEC the reporter that will can become their candidate, real candidate in the election. So I, I think that is the most important thing. But by the time the campaign starts, by the time Nigerians are beginning to ask, uh, ask uh, are being asked the question, do you want to go ahead with this team or do you want to make a detour? So I, I think, uh, like my brother Fine. said, by the time we get to the bridge, we are going to cross it. But 2023 election, might be different from what we've been in 2019. Some things I'm, be I'm curious to, I, I just want to ask a quick question because no, we're, no, we're no, out no, of time. No, let me just ask no, no, Mr. Idris, I'm uh, going to come to you before we wrap up. Let me just point, you know, post this question quickly to. I, I, I just want to make a point there before we, you, you yeah, ask yeah. the question. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Ilayoko, I. I like that you're saying that Nigeria, you're going to, you're, you'll have to ask these questions or that Nigerians will ask these questions. But my problem or my curiosity is how tired do you think Nigerians are? Because you also pointed out that you do not want to push Nigerians too much. But I mean, we hear this rhetoric every other campaign season. Oh, Nigerians are tired. Times are hard. Oh, the government has not done this and that. But we still see the same elections, you know, happen again and again. We still vote across those same lines. Nothing really changes. We've never really seen a revolutionary style election. And many have said that, oh, maybe 2023 might be that watershed moment. But then I sense that uncertainty, even in the air, even from both of your conversations, that that might not be a thing. And you even mentioned 2027. So could 2027 also turn into another year and we keep pushing it because maybe we're not tired enough? My no, what, I'm, what I was trying to say was that you see, I have said, I think, I, I, I think I'm talking, eh? Go ahead, quickly. Yeah, I, I, so was trying to, I was trying to say that uh, when I use the word spoiler, what I mean is that I can, I, can, I can tell you any day that the APC and the PDP, they will get clear their 25% of the two thirds of the, of the, of the, of, of, of the six states, including the FCC. That will be very clear. I don't see Labour Party and NPT getting two thirds of the 25% of those states I just mentioned. That is why I say they are spoiler. They may okay. certainly not get it. If it's the case, it even means that they are not going to go any far in terms of determining how they are going to win. So okay. these two other parties may probably be talking of, you know, number of votes cast. That okay. will be where the deciding, the deciding uh, ticket is going to come from. All right. All right, Mr. Layaku, quickly, because we're almost out of time. Yes. Um, for example, let me just take the last equity election as an example. You know, traditionally, it used to be either APC or PDP or PDP APC. Who could, ever, who could have ever imagined that an SDP will come in between these two and Siamese uh, brothers? So that is just to let you know that things will change in 2023. It's not going to be business as usual. I can assure you, can you that. And by the time we get there, we may got preserve our lives to be able to witness, and then we know that uh, things will definitely change. Well, Musa Idris is a political affairs analyst, he's also an engineer, and Dick Bolayak, who is a journalist, and he is the National Secretary of the NNPP. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me. All right. Thank, thank you, thank you all for staying with thank us. You. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll be discussing Kingsley Mugaloo's political future and what happens come 2023. Stay with us.